there is darkness that me shine light in may your love cause us to open up cause us to open up our hearts may your light cause us to
We light candles and hope that God's healing light will shine into the darkness. More and more candles, more and more light shining into the darkness of pandemic, racial injustice, and loss. The peace of God with us does not come as law and order or control. The peace of God with us comes as the gift of presence, equality, and justice. It invites our expectation and our participation. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. writes, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. So today we light two candles, hope and peace. Hope and peace. Prepare the way for a just peace like the voice of the prophets. Isaiah. Isaiah crying out where there is justice there will be peace and the fruit of righteousness, righteousness will be rest and and endless trust may peace be birthed among us within us and through us this advent O come O come emmanuel Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Santa Monica. Uh, just a reminder that today is Communion Sunday, so if you want to prepare for that, you can uh, do so by getting whatever bread and juice or wine or beverage that you have at home. If for any reason you'd prefer not to participate uh, with us online uh, in the eating of the bread and drinking of the juice, you're more than welcome just to receive the words and the prayers as a blessing. Uh, another reminder uh, for all of you who are planning on sending in a pledge card for the coming year but have not done so yet, that'll help a ton with our planning for 2021. If you want to just call Kathy or email her, uh, she's happy to fill out the pledge card for you, for you if that's easier. Now, in normal years, we have a, a group of, uh, of people sewing and making homemade crafts that they would then sell at a Christmas bazaar this time of year. But but of course, we're not together to do that, but they've continued to make stuff all year and are selling them again through the church if you are interested in those. There's a catalog and you can find out more information by calling the church and, and talking to Shelley. Um, and there's also a, a PDF catalog in the description below, I hope. I hope I've figured that out. Uh, but 
This is the second Sunday of Advent. We're continuing our journey toward Christmas. And so as we do that, please join me in prayer. Jesus, we pray that in this Advent season, in this Christmas season, that your spirit would continue to join us together and to remind us of your presence with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the world began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending he, of the things that are, that have. Welcome to Children's Time. This is the second week of Advent. Advent is the four weeks before Christmas, the season of waiting to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But wait, Advent isn't just a season of standing around and waiting for Jesus to be born. It's also a season of preparing, preparing our hearts to receive God's gift of Jesus, who was born for the whole world. But how do you prepare for that? Hmm. Well, here's how some of our families get ready for Christmas. What my family does to get ready for Christmas is we decorate. And my favorite decoration is this nativity scene, which moves around because the fan moves and the fan is powered by heat from the candles. It's my favorite. To get ready for Christmas, I decorate the Christmas tree and open a day of my advent calendar. There's usually either a piece of candy or a little toy, and I read a Bible verse. Thanks, George and Lindsay. Those are some great ways of preparing for Christmas. You know, you might also sing Christmas carols, read the Christmas story in the Bible, watch a video about the birth of Jesus, or give gifts or do something special for your family, friends, or neighbors. And of course, there's always going to church on Christmas Eve, but we'll have to do that from home this year. You know, God had his own idea about how to help us prepare for Jesus. God sent another baby before baby Jesus. Did you know that? His name was John, better known when he grew up as John the Baptist. And his birth was not exactly normal. His mom and dad were Zechariah and Elizabeth. They were unable to have a child until God decided that they would. Let's see the story of God's angel Gabriel telling Zechariah in the temple that he and Elizabeth would have a baby and how this baby was to be given the name John. Wilt thou hear the prayers of Israel, Lord? Lord. 
redeem us and help us to obey thy law. And Lord, comfort my wife in her sorrow. She smiles, but her heart is broken. <gasps> Fear not, Zacharias. I am Gabriel. The Lord has answered thy prayer. He has? Oh, uh, which one? Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call him John. My wife? A son? That's impossible. All things are possible with the Lord, Zacharias. Thy son shall be great in the sight of God. For he shall prepare the world for the coming of the Messiah. Are you sure you have the right, Zacharias? Oh, my wife and I are both old in years. We can't have a son. Zacharias, because thou believest not my words, thou shalt be unable to speak. Don't worry, Elizabeth. You'll come out any moment. Zacharias. What's wrong? Speak up. What's wrong? Say something, Zacharias. Zacharias, what happened? Speak to me. Speak to me, Zacharias. Are you all right? It's a miracle. He's a strong boy, too. Look at those arms. Ah, <laughs> uh, Zacharias. Zacharias. That's a good name. You're right. Zacharias. A perfect name for the little fellow. His name shall be John. Elizabeth, there's no John in our family. Nevertheless, he shall be called John. Nonsense. We'll settle this right now. What will you call the boy? The boy, his name. What is the boy's name? Huh? John. Oh, my. Blessed be the name of the Lord God of Israel. I... I can speak! <laughs> I prophesy in the name of the Lord that thou, child, shall be a prophet of God. So God sent John to tell us how to get ready for Jesus. But what did John say? Our friend Josie is going to read what Matthew had to say about John in the Bible. Years later, John the Baptist started preaching in the desert. He said, turn back to God. The kingdom of heaven will soon be here. John was the one the prophet Isaiah was talking about when he said, in the desert, someone is shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. From Jerusalem and all of Judea, crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the river. John said to them, I baptize you with water so that you will, will give up your sins. But someone more powerful is going to come. And I am not good enough even to carry a sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the way to get ready to celebrate Jesus' birth, according to John, is to stop what we're doing and make time for God. And then think about how we can do a better job living the way God wants us to. 
and we can ask God's Holy Spirit to help us. Then we'll be ready to celebrate Christmas with a heart full of love for God, our family, our friends, and our neighbors. That sounds like a plan. So let's say together, God loves me. God is for me. God is always with me. Thank you, God. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to It was a simple project, or so I thought. I just wanted to move a light switch from one wall to another for our chandelier uh, in the dining room of our home in Oregon. I told Maya it, it, it should only take me about an hour. Well, that was early in the morning. After lunch, with wires hanging out of the walls, Maya thought that it might be safer for her and the kids to go to the park. But as she walked out the door, she reminded me that we had dinner guests coming over at five o'clock. So when Maya walked back into the house at four o'clock, she saw a high chair on our dining room table holding a bucket which was supporting our chandelier with its wires hanging down from the ceiling. No light and a different kind of darkness fell over Maya's face. So we changed plans, I called an electrician, and we went out to dinner. Now the electrician arrived just before we left, and his advice to me was this, don't ever tell your wife that it's only going to take an hour. Now when we returned home, however, thanks to the electrician, we flipped the light switch on and magically there was light. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Evenings are coming earlier, and mornings are coming later, which means less light and more darkness. But once we hit the winter solstice on December 21st, according to the Farmer's Almanac, things begin to turn around. Uh, moving toward more light. So for this reason, the end of December has long been a time of celebration in many cultures uh, over, over many years as more and more light begins to shine into the darkness. Now in the ancient world, and in, even in many places today, it's during the long winter nights that food begins to run out. It's at night when thieves break in and armies invade. More and more light, however, brings greater security. It carries us into new seasons with new crops and new life. So light and darkness are stories about life and death. It's, it's not a big leap from there to Hollywood staging sad scenes with overcast skies and, and rain or happy scenes with sunny, bright blue skies. We tell our stories with words and images and symbols. So as we're moving through Advent, I've been wondering about the stories that were being told way back then, just before the birth of Jesus. What tales were told as, as the shepherds watched their flocks at night? 
What did a very pregnant Mary and her husband-to-be talk about on their journey to Bethlehem? And what stories do we tell and retell when life is difficult or when life is good? Darkness was over the surface of the deep. There was darkness and there was water. In the ancient world, these were images of uncontrollable chaos. Think about the ancient maps with, with dragons painted in the areas yet to be explored and how dangerous they imagined those to be. Um, with the words, here be dragons on the maps. Um, comedian uh, Jim Gaffigan says that when people ask him and his wife what it's like having five kids, he says, imagine that you're drowning and then someone hands you a baby. Um, <laughs> If you've ever said something like that, or something like, I'm just buried at work, or, or I'm drowning, you're trying to emphasize just how overwhelming or chaotic life feels at the moment, right? So there's water, and there's darkness. And over all the years and centuries, the way this story starts speaks to hurting people and overwhelmed people. As slaves in Egypt, the people of God would have said, look, this story is about us. Our world feels dark and chaotic. As exiles in Babylon, they would have said, look, this story is about us. And as Joseph and Mary are forced on this long journey by an empire wanting to extract more money from this already poor couple, maybe they retold this story saying, look, this story is about us. And, and who knows, maybe today in the middle of a pandemic, we might be saying that this story is about us too. It's in the midst of the chaos, in the middle of a dark night, that God speaks. And, and it's just as important, if not more important, than when God actually, than what God actually says. God speaks, which means that that we're not alone, that God is here, regardless of, of what he will then say. There's something amazing that happens at night when I'm, I'm alone uh, with our kids, and maybe Maya is, is off somewhere else. Um, and as it gets later and later, we all are getting more and more tired and exhausted. And it's possible that they might start throwing more tantrums, and it's also possible that I might then start throwing my own tantrums. And just when none of us can take any more of this, we hear the most amazing sound, the sound of a doorknob turning and a door opening. Before we see Maya, we hear that she is home. I breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that she's safe, and our kids yell, Mom is home! And a light shines into the darkness. So, in Genesis, when we hear that God speaks, it's like the sound of a doorknob turning, and we know that God is home. Verse 3 says that God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, this is interesting because if we keep reading, the sun, moon, and stars aren't created until day four, and yet here on day one, there's light. How exactly does that work? Well, another common story in the ancient world went something like this, and we've heard it a million times. The stars, the moon, and the sun are gods who have great power over us and therefore demand our worship and our sacrifice. Of course, with the arrival of longer days and more sun comes spring and new crops and life. So it's not surprising that the Egyptians, for example, worshipped Ra, the sun god, and many other cultures worshipped sun gods. How can we keep the sun happy? So, so its light shines on us just enough to give us a good year, but not so much that there will be a drought. So we build temples for these gods. We bring gifts and sacrifices to these gods, but, but there's no limit. There's no telling how much they want. So the gods end up demanding more than they can ever give. It's sort of like the, the modern 
source of light that, that we're currently worshiping as Christmas approaches. We ask this God for, for what we want. We, we bring our sacrifice and then enter its expiration date and security code or security number. Uh, we push the buy now button and our God speaks. Thank you for your order. Your package will arrive tomorrow by 9 p.m. But just when we think that we've done all that we need to do, <clears throat> then we get an email saying, others who purchased this item also liked these items, or, or our package arrives and we realize or someone tells us that what we just got is, is actually out of style, or, or a new upgrade just came out and, and we missed it. But Genesis is telling us that there's actually a light that can shine into the darkness even without that God. At the very earliest, Amazon.com won't be created till day four. At the earliest, probably, probably later. It can actually be okay if a package doesn't arrive today. So there's evening and there's morning the first day. And then, and then the second day all the way up to day six. And then on day seven, God finishes what God started. And all of a sudden, out of a sea of chaos, there's now order and structure. But there's, there's something that we often miss about that order and structure. So let's pretend, for example, that online shopping was the name of a God in the ancient world. <laughs> Archaeologists today might dig up an old stone or scroll that tells the story of the temple built to this god. Are you following me? Um, and if online shopping was like several other gods in the ancient world, we might read that their temple was constructed and dedicated in a religious ceremony that lasted seven days. So, so assuming that slaves struggling in Egypt knew this, Assuming that exiles far from home in Babylon knew this within their own culture, and, and assuming Mary and Joseph knew this, they would see and hear that God was building his own temple right here, all around us. This story of darkness and light is, is about us. It's, it's about everyone. It's about God, which means that if we are away from home, God's home is there with us. Or if, like Mary and Joseph, we're on the road or homeless, God's home is there with us. And if there is a pandemic and we're stuck at home, God is at home with us. Whenever we come to this table, we're, we're reminded that this is not the table of First Presbyterian Church of Santa Monica, uh, but this is the table of Jesus Christ. And so because of that, all are welcome, without exception, to come and experience God's presence with us. So it was on the night that Jesus was arrested, that after giving thanks to God, he took the bread, breaking it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had eaten, he took the cup, pouring it out, saying, 
saying this is the cup of the new covenant or the new promise poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the bread of life, and this is the cup of God's great salvation. So please join me as we pray together. Jesus, we pray that as we continue through this season, that this meal, this bread, this reminder of your self-giving love would sustain us and nourish us through these, these dark nights as we move toward Christmas. We pray that this juice, this wine, would refresh us as we continue to travel through this season. And Jesus, we pray that as... COVID-19 cases are increasing, and we continue to travel through this pandemic, that your spirit would be especially among those who are working at the front lines and caring for people. We pray that your spirit would be close to those who are sick, to those who are caring for loved ones, to those who have lost loved ones. So we take just a moment to pray for those who are on our hearts and on our minds in this time. Finally, Jesus, we continue to lean against you as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The world waits for a miracle The heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh, come, oh, come child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come emmanuel and can you hear the angels
heart breaks with the tears of a mother A baby's cry is the sound of love Come down, come down, Emmanuel He is the song for the suffering He is Messiah, the Prince of Peace Has come, He has come Oh, come, oh, come.